Hi, this is Ron Risman with Time Lapse Moab, and I am here to give a demonstration and a tutorial on how to integrate the Motomo TB3 Black with the Dynamic Perception Stage 1 Dolly, but also how to control a three axis move just with the Motomo, meaning you can pop off the motor for the Dynamic Perception, you can move aside the MX2 or MX3 controller, whichever one you own, and you can control it all with just a remote control on the Motomo. So let me show you how this works. Now in order to do a complete three axis integration with the Emotomo, you want to make sure that you have the quick release attachment or the quick release mount for the stage one dolly and the quick release motor. Obviously you don't need the motor in this case because you're going to be replacing it as I'll show you. But the quick release mount allows you to um, remove the motor. Um, and now if you need to move this from one end of the track to the other, you can do so, which is nice. You can actually use it as a manual video dolly, which is nice. Um, but the quick release is the way that you control this with the Emotomo. So let's start with this. Um, the Emotomo now has an optional external stepper motor. And this is why you can't use the dynamic perception motor. This is a DC motor, whereas this is a stepper motor. And the Emotomo works with the stepper motor, and it makes it frame accurate. This stepper motor is keyed and designed to fit in the exact same spot. Let me move this over here. As the, um, let's make sure the key is in the right place. As the dynamic perception motor. So it pops right in. And before I pop this in, I'm going to attach a little tray. This is a, an optional accessory tray that you can get from Dynamic Perception. And I usually put this accessory tray in between the motor and the, um, and the quick release mount. And then I can just tighten up the motor. And the benefit of having the accessory tray here, and I probably made that a little bit too tight here. The benefit of having the accessory tray is I usually put my battery on it. This is an Anchor 10,000 milliamp battery pack. Um, and this outputs not just USB, which a lot of the less expensive battery packs offer, but it also has an output for, um, for 9 volt and for 12 volt. And at 10,000 milliamp, this will allow you to do a time lapse, probably three different time lapses if you're on level. Uh, if you have it at an angle of 45 degree ang angle, you'll probably get about two time lapses out of this. And if you're going to go vertical, you probably would just get one time lapse out of this. Anchor now makes bigger batteries. You can get 14,004 batteries. I think they were now replaced with a 20,000 milliamp battery, which would give you double the, the numbers that I just gave you here. This is a 10,000 milliamp. I'm going to uh, place this right on the tray. Um, I've actually put magnets on the bottom of this with l using a little bit of Sugru. Sugru is like a putty that gets hard. Uh, and there's magnets in there, and that just allows it to stick to the tray, which is nice. I don't have to worry about it sliding off. And now let's hook up the Emotomo. So the Emotomo TB3 Black um, is a two-axis pan and tilt head. I'm sure most of you know that if you're watching this video. Um, and when you hook it into the third motor, it now controls the left and right movement of the dolly, which gives it the third axis. I've attached a Manfrotto quick-release plate on here and a Manfrotto quick-release um, attachment on the ball head. That gives me the ability to slide the Emotomo on very quickly, so I don't have to sit there and, and screw things on. I don't have my camera mounted on here because I'm using it right now to film, um, but for everything else, we're going to go through and show you how to use this. Once I've got the Emotomo uh, connected here, I'm going to rotate this around just so that you can see what I'm doing instead of walking around to the other side of the dolly. And this is where you plug everything in. So the, the tilt motor is this cable here, and this plugs into the tilt motor connection. It is keyed. You want to make sure these little, um, these little tabs are sticking up. And you slide that right in. And then the external motor also has a connection, and it goes into the external motor port. And again, it's keyed, and you want to make sure the little tabs are facing up. And that slides right in just like that. And then you want to connect the power. For a power cable, I'm going to use a um, little DC connector here and plug it into, I actually have a, um, a PA, now this is interesting, I want to show you this real quick. Um, I've got a little splitter here for DC power and I've tested this out and it works. And what this allows you to do, it allows you to plug in one battery pack into one end of the splitter and if you had a second battery pack you could plug it into the second end of the splitter and then you plug this into the, the Emotomo. You could have both battery packs on. Now, one thing I haven't tested is whether the second battery pack would stay on. And what this, will, what this will do, the splitter, this will draw power from one battery. And if you unplug one battery, the other battery will automatically take over. Or what you could do is leave the other battery un, you know, um, plugged in but not turned on. 
And when you see this one getting low, you can actually turn the second battery on and then just disconnect this one and now you've got longer battery life. Um, I don't know whether this is the safest way to do it, but it works for me. Um, so I just wanted to pass that along as a tip. So we've got the power plugged in. The only thing left now to plug in would be the intervalometer cable. The um, Motomo controls your camera using the built-in intervalometer. So you need to get a, a cable that plugs into your remote port on your camera. This happens to be for Canon, but you can get them for Canon, Nikon, and different brands. I'm going to plug this into the camera port. And then normally this would plug into my camera. I don't have my camera on here, so I'm not going to use this cable at this point. And I'm going to pivot this around so that we can see it as I turn this on. I'm going to hit the battery power. And that powers up the Emotomo TB3. And the only thing really left in this scenario is how to control it all. And now you control it all from this joystick. The joystick runs on Bluetooth. You want to get, uh, in my opinion, when you're buying the, the TB3 Black, you want to make sure you get the wireless option. I, I believe that's the best case. It works on Bluetooth, uses very little power. You hit the button to sync it up, and we're now synced up to go. Now the Emotomo, this is not going to be a complete demonstration of how to use the Emotomo um, all the way through, but I want to talk about some of the new features of the Emotomo. Emotomo has added a feature called the reverse two-point move and the reverse three-point move. The three-point move is new to the latest firmware update. And what that allows you to do compared to, well, let me explain what a two-point move is, and then you might have a better understanding of what a three-point move would do. A two-point move is basically you, you, you start to dolly at the beginning, which is point one. You aim your pan and tilt wherever you want it. Then you move it down the track. When you get to the end, you then select where you want your camera to pan and tilt at the end. That's two points. The three-point move now allows you to move to the middle and select where you want that middle point to be. So now, okay. let's assume I wanted to track the sun going down as a sunset and then have the camera go back up to the sky to capture the Milky Way. Normally with a two-point move you couldn't do that because if you select your first point here and your second point here, it's not going to go down and follow the sun and go back up. It's just going to arc up to the second point. With a three-point move, you can select your first point to be aiming here. As it moves across the dolly to the halfway point, you can select your second point to be down a little bit lower at the horizon as the sun goes down below the horizon. And then as it moves to the end of the dolly, you can have your third point go back up to capture the Milky Way. Or it could go back up over here. It doesn't really matter where it's aiming. You, you control that. So new, new to this latest firmware is a three-point move. Also new is a re, what they call a reverse move. And the reverse move is designed to save battery life. So normally in a setup like this, you would actually select your start point here. So I would go through and um, let's select a two-point move. I'd go through and I'd aim my camera where I want it. All done with this joystick. I hit this, the beginning. And now I would move to the end. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this to the end this way here. Let's just pretend I get to the end. Pretend it's all the way down the end. And now I would select my, my end point. Let's say I want to end it over here and down just like that. I hit my end point. Then I go through and I, I select all my other intervals, my shot duration. Uh, it calculates how many frames, whether I want to ramp in and ramp out of the, um, of the time lapse. And then when I'm done, it wants to return to the start position, which is obviously going to take a lot more battery when you're actually starting from the real end position. So typically when you're doing a, um, a normal two-point move or a normal three-point move, you start point, middle point, end point, and then before you start the time lapse, it has to go all the way back to the beginning, which drains battery life. So instead of maybe getting two or three time lapses out of the battery, you might only get one or two because of the, the power needed to get this back to the beginning. So the Emotomo has added in, I'm going to unplug this so I can uh, start, this, start this over again. Emotomo has added in a reverse three-point move. So the reverse three-point move is you actually start at the end point. Then you go back to the beginning point, and now when you start your time lapse, it's already there. You don't have to waste the battery life to go back. So as an example, um, let's assume I want to start down the end. What I would do in this case is I would loosen the motor up just like this, and I would slide this down to the end point just to save battery life. Or you can make the end point start there, but I'm going to start it down here. And I'm going to find the key for the motor. 
Okay, the motor's in. So now I'm at my end point. So now instead of doing a normal, I'm going to reconnect the joystick. Instead of doing a normal two-point move, I'm now going to do a three-point move. So I'm going to select a reverse three-point move. I'm going to um, level the Emotomo. So now I've got the reverse three-point move. It's asking me to move to point number three. So I'm already at point number three here. So I'm going to decide how I want my camera to aim. So let's assume I'm going to end it at the Milky Way. So I'm going to bring the camera so that it's aimed up toward the sky, just like that. Boom, hit that. Now it says move to the second point. So I'm going to actually use my joystick just by tilting the joystick. Unfortunately, I've got the dolly reversed um, so that when I pivot my hand to the right, it's actually moving to the left. I should have actually just swung this around, but um, you'll figure it out very quickly uh, which way it's moving as you tilt your hand. Um, when you're doing a three-point move, the third point is always going to be in the middle of the move. So you might as well just go to the middle of the dolly because that's where it's ultimately going to make that third point move. So I'm going to stop it here and now I'm going to bring my camera. I want my camera to track the sunset. So at this point, the sun's going to be down at the horizon. So I'm going to keep this fairly level and aim it out toward the horizon. Mark that as my second point. And then I'm going to bring this over to the first point. Now one thing you want to be um, careful of when you're doing a um, a three-point move and you're actually using this to control, you're using your remote control to control the left and right. The thing you want to be careful of is you can't place this down. If you place this down, and you, you're tilting it. And by tilting it, you're going to get this trying to move one way or the other. I found hanging it is the safest thing to do. If you hang it, then the, um, the gyro that's in here will not get this to go one way or the other. So um, I sometimes will put it in my mouth and just hang it from my teeth as I'm adjusting things because I don't want it to um, move the dolly left or right. So I've got, I've got my point one. I'm going to um, aim this up a little bit more because the sun hasn't set yet. So again, we're going from Milky Way, the sun has set, to the sun in the sky. So we're going to aim this up so that it tracks the sun. And now I've got my first point. So now I'm all set to set my intervals. So I'm just going to set this to a two second interval. And I'm going to do this for, let's say, six minutes. Now normally a sunset would take longer than six minutes from this angle, but we're just going to select six minutes. Uh, my static time I'm going to leave alone for now since I, I'm not using my camera. Um, I'm going to leave the ramp alone. Normally it's set for ramping 50 frames. What that means is it comes up to speed during the 50 for first 50 frames so that it's a smooth start instead of just jolting. I personally like to bring that down to you know one just because um, I'd rather ramp it in post than have it forced on me once I, have, once I have it baked in, so to speak. My static time is how long you want it to sit before it actually starts to move. I'm going to leave that at one because I want it to move right away. And now it's already at this, the beginning stage. I don't have to move it back to the beginning because we did the reverse move. So now we're all set to go. And the program's running. And now you can tilt the remote because it's no longer controlling it because the Emoto motor has now taken over the control. And this is going through, and it'll tell you it's on the seventh frame, eighth frame, ninth frame. Now it's ramping up in speed over the 50 frames. And you can now see this moving. We've almost moved an inch. Um, and you'll, if you watch really closely, you can probably see the head. It starts to move down a little bit each step. Now normally, your camera would be on here, and it would actually be triggering your camera each one of these. So it would be click, click, click and all the way down the dolly. The nice thing about this is by using their motor and taking, you no longer have to use the MX2 or MX3 controller um, when you want to do a three-point move and you don't have to sit there and try to figure out the, the timing on the MX3 and how this is going to interact with the, M with the uh, Emotomo and is this going to move the dolly while the camera is still taking a picture, all those sort of variables that you've had to figure out in the past. By using their external motor, everything is done for you. But this is a, a really um, convenient, fast, and there's no math needed, really, other than how long you want your time lapse to last. Well, I think sunset is going to, if it's 5 o'clock and the sunset's at 6.30, I probably want this to go till 7.30 just because it doesn't um, really get super dark until, you know, um, astro astronomical twilight. So I would probably keep this going from, let's say, 5 to 7.30, so I'd put in two and a half hours as my time lapse. Um, and that way it starts here at 5 o'clock. It ends here at 7.30. You don't have to worry about how far this is going to move per 
minute, it figures it all out for you. So that's the benefit of the stepper motor. It has a memory built in so that it knows exactly what frame it ended on and what frame it started on. Um, and it takes care of all the other math for you. So again, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, I hope you join us also. Time-lapse workshops has a lot of um, advanced uh, time-lapse workshops around the country. We're doing two in Moab. Um, the next one's going to be in June um, of this year. And it's a five-day workshop. It focuses on the night sky. And we're going to be uh, teaching the Stage 1 Dolly as well as the Emoto Mode TB3. This has got a, a lot of other modes in here that we're going to take you through. Um, and we're going to be doing daytime time lapses as well as nighttime time lapses. But we're focusing on the night sky. We're going to stay out very, light at, very late at night. We're going to teach you how to do bow ramping from day to night. We're going to teach you how to do um, time lapses of pretty much any kind of scene, that you, whether it be fast moving clouds or people or cars. Um, you're going to learn everything about intervals, learn everything about how to capture flicker free so that you don't have to do a lot of work in post to smooth out your time lapses. And, um, and when, the, when the best um, time is to use a three axis move. Using a three axis move isn't something you need all the time. Usually I would keep the MX3 controller in here and I would do a standard two axis move. Um, but there are times when you want to do a three axis move and this, set, this setup just makes it a breeze to do. So again, thank you for watching. Check out timelapseworkshops.com and uh, I will see you soon. Thanks.